All right, welcome. Uh, thanks for tuning in. So today's class, again, a level one class. Um, glad you could make it. Uh, you'll need a strap today. And if you don't have a strap, you could use a t-shirt. If you don't have a t-shirt, you could use your hands, but the strap will help if you have a difficult time grabbing your foot in positions to stretch the leg. So the class is gonna start in a supine position. Um, and it's, it, it's something that you can repeatedly do. So if you had a wrist injury or shoulder injury, or you just don't want to be moving today, you know, you could do the sequence that I'm going to use in the very beginning class, and then you could repeat it. And again, you could repeat it however many times you want to. Um, and it's something that I'll add like towards more towards the end of class. So, all right. So we'll start on your back. So as I'm coming down to my back, I want to have my strap with me and I want maybe possibly a block um, if I do want to do a supported bridge. So once you go back onto your back, you're going to have your knees bent and just have the legs, um, you know, either in or slightly out so that what you want to do is relate to your lower back. So I'm a person that has a, a specific kind of sway to my back when I stand. So as I've improved my posture over the years, it's less of a sway. And then some people, like mostly men, they have this kyphotic arc in the lower back and that's something that you, you know, neither are good, but you can definitely correct them so that it's not so problematic for yourself. So just have the hands over the elbows, a 90 degree angle, and just draw the shoulders back and feel how the shoulders relate to the floor. And then push through the heels of the feet and elevate through the hips. And what you, you know, you're taking the hips up, but a big component is, is that you're lifting through the spine. So I'm really trying to lift gradually through the lower back. It's the very first thing that we're doing. So when you're up in something like this, I say this all the time in classes, is that you're, you're gonna favor a leg. And it's not bad to favor it, but you wanna get the other leg involved. So I'm not gonna hold this, incredibly long, but if I held it for a few minutes, um, people would burn out because they're relying too much on one leg more than the other. So you're breathing in and out through the nose. So you got a lot of pressure in your head and your neck, right? We'd want to put something underneath your shoulders and um, that could be a blanket. So when you're, when you're pushing through the heels of the feet, you know, again, you don't have to be as high as you can go, but what you're, again, you're lifting from the lumbar, but you're really trying to lift more and more from the thoracic. So take three deep breaths here, you know, use your breath, fill your chest up, and maybe you're not holding it as long as I am, you know, which is perfectly fine. If I was really tired, I would have the block underneath me on the lowest, second, or highest level, you know, based on preference. And then you can bring the hips down, and then when you're bringing the hips down, try to roll the back out if you could, and then your hips are all the way down. I'm gonna bring my feet together and have my knees wide. And if I'm pushing into the tops of my thighs, you know, that'll help create space in the pelvis. Um, really, really great, you know, for the lower back. And then what you're gonna do is basically take the legs back up, take a couple deep breaths, hands could be on you in any type of way, right? To help you with your breathing. And I'm gonna take my legs up and I'm just gonna come up with my head and my shoulders a bit. And I'm gonna push into the thighs now, you know, my, you might not have as long of arms, so if I had a block, I could push like so. So, not that your lower back has to be in the floor, but if I'm using the front of my body, it's, there's gonna be, again, less of a sway. I could support the head too, as well. You don't have to be up with your head and your shoulders. And then just come back down, nice and slow. Take a couple deep breaths. So that's like an entry, entry level, like for, obviously supporting your core and getting stronger, but what I'm gonna do is an opposite arm and leg exercise that I really like, and it's, it's very good for um, an anterior tilt of the pelvis. So that's really good to kind of level up the pelvis. Most women have this. So you're gonna take the legs straight up, um, and then just bend the knees so that the knees are over the hips. I'm gonna take my hands um, just over my shoulders, and I'm gonna keep my lower back in the floor. So this is the very base of it. So this is a good thing to start with, but I'm gonna take my left leg forward and my right arm overhead. So the head stays down, right? But I'm keeping my knee over my pelvis. Bring the hands over the shoulders, bring the knees over the hips, take the right leg forward 
and then the left arm overhead. So um, if, if it was really hard on your back, I wouldn't bring the leg all the way forward. And to bring the hands over the shoulders, the knees over the hips, take the right arm overhead, bring the left leg forward. If it's easy, you're swaying. You're not really getting stronger by doing that. Bring the hands over the shoulders, the knees over the hips, take the left arm overhead and the right leg forward and just keep pulling in, pulling in, all right? And then you can bring the hands over the shoulders, the knees over the hips, bring the feet back down, bring the hands over the elbows, push through the heels, elevate through the pelvis, you know? You wanna get wider through your ribs with back bend and you wanna get wider through the shoulders. Uh, you don't wanna just increase the height. Um, some people need more tailbone down. Um, not so much with this back bend, but when I get it up into wheel, I'm gonna use more of the strength of my front of my body. Same thing with like Cobra. And then you can uh, bring your hips down and you can just relax for a couple breaths. And, and maybe you wanna back bend more, of course you could obviously stay more. Uh, but I'm gonna grab my strap and I'm gonna place it around my right foot. So as I take the right leg up, um, I like the top of the foot, could be the arch of the foot, could be the heel of the foot. Uh, it's early, so maybe the leg isn't fully straight yet, and that's perfectly fine. So those of you that have really tight hamstrings, perfectly fine if the knee is bent. Um, but over time, you can really express through the leg. You know, you can get it to come up. And then what I'm going to do is come up with my head and my shoulders towards that foot. And then if I want, to, if I want more leverage in the leg, I'm going to lean back, right? So I'm, I'm off the floor but I'm still going back in space so that, but um, I said this in the last class, you're using the strength of your hip, right? To, to bring it in more, not just the arms. And then come back down with the head and the shoulders and then hold with the right hand and you're gonna take the right leg out to the right. And when I start to feel uh, a pretty decent stretch, even though I can take it up further, I'm gonna keep it here. And what I'm doing is I'm really widening through my right thigh. I'm using more effort if I need it. Um, your hand, the closer the hands to the foot, the more tension there will be. So if you really want to stretch it out more, then that's where it's at. It doesn't have to be that high. Those of you that don't have a, a strap, you could support the leg with your hand. Um, and, and, and we're going to inhale, take the right leg up. And this might be the best angle. A lot of people need this angle. You know, the other angles are great too, but this is a great angle to work on. Come up with the head and the shoulder one more time. And then when you're coming up, and if say you're pulling, this is common, but you'll see that the lower back is getting kind of pushed into the floor. So if it's rounding, right, it might be something you wanna not do all the time. And then come back down with the head and the shoulders. So just so that you can, you can stay where you're at, obviously. I'm gonna take the strap off my foot. I'm gonna change so that you can see me. So take the left leg up into the strap if you're not changing your position. And then when you take the left leg up, again, I like the, the top of the foot. But it could certainly be the arch of the foot. Could be the heel of the foot. And, you know, it, a great time to look at the shin. So what does your shin do in space when you stand? So um, it might be turned in too much, might be turned out too much, and that's something that you could definitely correct over time. Um, you can come up with the head and the shoulders, and then if you do, you know, um, again, you don't wanna just use your arms. I mean, it's, it's great to stretch out the leg, and it's, it's good for the arms if you're not very strong in the arms, but you, re you really wanna get stronger through the, the hip, the hip flexor. So eventually you're doing like poses like Navasana, and then if I'm leaning back, right, then there's just more leverage in the hamstring. And then you can come back down with the head and the shoulders. Hold the strap with the left hand and then take the left leg out to the left. And each side is very unique. So maybe, like I don't feel much of anything on my left side as I did on my right. So um, if I was practicing on my own, I probably would go back and do my right side more. That's just me. Um, and that's something you could do as well. So think that you're not even using the strap. You wanna support the leg with strength. And then when you push the foot out, you'll get more space between 
the thighs, right, for the hips. And then inhale, take the left leg back up. And then when you take the left leg up, um, you could come up with the head and the shoulders. You could lift yourself up towards the leg. Again, you could lean back. And then you can come back down with the head and the shoulders. You can take the strap off the foot and you can put it off to the side. And then when you put it off to the side, just have the hands over the elbows, have the shoulders, you know, pulling back on the floor and lift the hips up. And as you lift up, think tailbone down and pubic bone up. Especially if you're a person like that again sways, you know, that like like you, um, you know, there's people that uh, again mainly women, not to pick on women, but you're 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 wanting to get more level in the pelvis. So take a couple deep breaths, and then for men, right, um, this is very good because it's going to help lift the lumbar so that the lumbar is not collapsed, especially when you sit. So use your legs. Broaden your shoulders, broaden your back, and then bring your hips down. And then when you bring your hips down, you can just take a couple deep breaths here. So breathing in, breathing out. Right. And then we're gonna roll to either side. Just, you know, to come up, you can use your hands, bring yourself back up, and then come into a seated position. So then in a seated position, you could be up on a higher uh, surface if you took the class. See, on Sunday or you looked at it online, you know, I did some side bending. We're gonna repeat that. So you can take the left arm out to the left and reach the right arm out to the right. And all this time I'm using my feet. So I'm pushing the outsides of my feet into the floor. I'm either squeezing my legs together or I'm pushing my thighs apart. Then you can take the right hand behind the head if that's good for you. And then you can lift through the chin. You can lift through the chest. And I say this often in my classes is like, I'm going to go as far as I need to. So I don't necessarily have to go as far as I can. Um, you know, you'll still benefit if you're not going to your full range of motion. And then you can take the right amount to the right. You can bring yourself back up, recross the legs. And then as you recross the legs, you can take the right hand to the right side. You can reach the left hand to the left. You can lean forward. You can lean back. Really simple way of, you know, getting a really good side bend, especially if you, you struggle in like triangle or side angle. You can take the left hand behind the head. You can lift the chin. You can lift the chest. Um, you'll see one side so much easier to get lower. And then by getting lower, that's, that side of your body is, is more condensed. It's, it's more compromised. So when you look in the mirror, you're brushing your teeth. The shoulder that's lower is the side that you collapse in. And then that side can develop problems. Alongside the other side can develop problems, but usually the side that's collapsing um, could be that, you know, uh, you develop a limp in some way. So you wanna get more balance through the upper body. You can take the left arm out to the left, you can bring yourself back up. So when you come back up, um, come into an all four position. So come onto your hands and your knees. Have the hands just underneath the shoulders. Push the hands around the spine into a cat stretch. Look forward, look up, you can back bend. You can exhale, you can round your back. You can back bend, you can lift the chin, the chest. And for those of you that, you know, don't want to round your back, you can stay here the whole time. And you know, this is a great thing to work on. You don't need a motion. You can round through the spine, you can round through the back and then just come back to neutral. So just so you see me a little bit more, I'm gonna take my left leg out to the left. It can be a little bit off the floor, it could be all the way up. As you get more familiar with these, it could be a circular motion, it could be an up and down motion. Um, I just would pay real close attention to what you're actually um, experiencing rather than just doing like a high repetition. Not that that could be, you know, that could be very good for you as well. You could bring the left leg down then take the right leg out to the right and, you know, I'm just exploring. It doesn't have to be, again, really high. It could be low. So say I'm cramping up, I'd definitely bring it lower. And, you know, if I have the, if it's relaxed enough, I could take it higher. And then bring the right leg back down. And then just have the hands turned out just so that you can, you can move the weight around. And those of you that, you know, if you could be on your wrist or your hand, you know, you could be sitting in Virasana, you could be sitting in Sukhasana. A lot of great hip opening you could do if you couldn't be on your hands. 
um, for whatever reason. And then come back into the middle and take the hands over the left side, look high over the left shoulder. So my right hip is pulling back. I just brought my ribs in and that just adds a different element. Not that you don't, you know, you could very well be an extension. Take the hands to the right side and then when you take the hands to the right, look high over the right shoulder, lift the head, lift the chest, you know, and I just brought that in. Something that I do in plank, it's something that I do in handstands. And then you can bring it back into the middle. So we're gonna come into an all four position. So just take the hands a little bit more forward, you know, just however you are, round through your shoulders, round through your back, and then lift up into a plank and just kind of see where you hold the weight. So it might be needing to be longer. You know, I said this in the other class, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to apply strength here. Um, as opposed to just kind of sitting in the position. And then lower the knees, and then when you lower the knees, we're not gonna sit back all the way, we're just gonna come down on the hands and the elbows. Then reach the arms forward, if you can. Keep the ribs in, and the head could be down. The head might not be able to come down, so it's okay if it, it's not touching the floor, but I could look forward. Um, and I'm keeping my ribs in as best that I can. And, and what this does is it exposes my shoulders more. So it's not necessarily like that's the only approach, but for me, that's, that's a very good thing for me in practicing. And then come back up into an all four position and then push with the hands, you're rotating shoulders out and you're, you know, you're gonna come up into a down dog, lift the knees, lift the thighs and pull back. And, and if you, you know, just get familiar you know, pedal the legs out, doesn't have to be perfect. And then when you're pedaling the legs out, you know, especially if you struggle in the pose, push down through the knuckles of the, you know, the hands, you know, push down through the fingertips and pull back. So don't just, you know, dump into your shoulders, right? Lift up, you know, through the shoulders and lift back through the hips. So you could be moving the head the whole time. I'm gonna you know, push my heels out. I'm gonna come forward and through if I can into an up dog. Again, you're engaging abdomen ribs. Um, but, you know, a bit of tension in the glutes. It shouldn't hurt. You can pull back up into a down dog. It may hurt initially, you know, it's part of the, it may be part of your process. You can swing forward and through and there's, you know, literally thousands and thousands of different ways to back bend. It doesn't have to be this. And then you can pull back into a down dog and then walk the feet forward to the middle of your mat and walk your hands back toward your feet. Bring the elbows above the knees, the thighs. So again, some of you have osteoporosis. You can't fold forward. You could be here. You don't have to fold all the way forward. Um, if you are, you're like, oh, I love folding forward. I want to be full, you know, you could be pulling, but I'm going to have you come up so you can bring yourself back up into an upright position. So when you come up, you can take the arms overhead just so that I'm facing you. You can come up on the toes. You can lift the heels off the floor. So a lot of times people have flat feet. I do this repeatedly in my classes, but, um, you could be doing it throughout the day and you, know, you could pick a day, you know, Casually in the morning, walk around your apartment on your toes. Um, same thing afternoon, evening, and it'll strengthen the feet so that you know you have you know, better support through that. And then lower the heels, and you can exhale. You can lower the arms, and take the feet out into a wide space. And with the feet out wide, I'm going to take my arms out to uh, hide my shoulders. I'm going to turn my right foot out, and I'm going to bend the right knee and. Um, you know, I, I, it's not bad to sit super low, but if I'm again a, a person that wants to develop strength from this particular position, I'm not going to sit as as deep as I can, and that's something that I use, you know, personally in my own practice. Not that I don't sit deeper; I definitely sit deeper in positions. But for for based on getting stronger, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring my my thighs out wider, and I'm not going to sit super super low. Bring the right forearm on the right thigh, continue to lift through the upper body. Again, you could be reaching floor down, right, for a block or your foot or whatever. You could take the left arm up to the ceiling. You could take it overhead. 
and, and let's just say you need to come out, you can always go back into it. And you know, it doesn't have to be like perfect. You know, you're working on yourself, you're developing yourself, you're turning your upper body towards the ceiling. Then take the left arm up to the left, bring yourself back up into a warrior two. So try to get weight in the back foot if you can. You know, I said this in other classes, you know, if I'm easily turning to my right, I may need to turn to my left. Then you can bring yourself back up. You can turn the right foot in and the left foot away from the back foot, which is now the right foot. Take the arms out wide. And then when you bend the left knee, you want to be constantly lifting through the crown. So it's something that I practice when I remember throughout the day. You know, I'm not obviously doing it all the time, but it's something that I'm, I'm really working on when I remember. So as I'm out here, I'm lifting the thighs up and out. And I may, you know, for, for myself, I need to drop the tailbone down and lift from the pubic bone. For you, you might not need as much of that, right? You can bring the left form on the left thigh. You can take the right arm up to the ceiling. You can take it overhead. So I'm, I'm not just relying on my left leg. You know, I'm, I'm, the, the use of the back leg is really what's gonna expose more of the right side of the body. It could be up and maybe you're already Done, right? Maybe you're not in it as long as I am. Bring yourself back up into a warrior two. Drop down through the tailbone, lift through the pubic bone, and bring yourself back up. You can turn the left foot in, and then turn the, actually just step the feet back to neutral, and just see how you stand. And again, if you have a wall that's, you know, you can relate to the wall and see if you're even. So I posted something on Facebook yesterday as far as a standing meditation. It's a little different than like a Tadasana um, position. My feet could be a little wider. And the more you stand and the more you bring the weight in the middle of the foot, the more erect you'll get. And you know, very good for posture. So we'll come to the top of the mat. When you come forward, you can inhale, take the arms up overhead and you can exhale, you can fold forward into a forward fold. Now use blocks, of course, or chair. And those of you that are not folding forward, you're just going to be doing your poses from a standing position. Mm -hmm. So once you're forward and you're down, step the left foot back into a lunge. And if, if you got a lot of pressure on the front leg, it means the stance is too short. And if you really want to stretch your body out, continue to make it longer. It's, you know, for in the regard of flexibility, you can make these things longer. You can uh, take the right arm up to the ceiling so the right arm is high and the left hand is low. So I'm turning my upper body towards my right hand. And then bring the right hand down and bring the back knee down the floor with or without padding and then walk the hands over to the left hip and you can look high over the left shoulder. So being able to lift the head, you continue to be able to drive a car, ride a bike, you know, might be something that you you know, you have, but you may lose. So it's really good to keep the, be it, having the capacity to look over the shoulders. Then bring the hand on the, on the inside, just move the weight around if you could, you know, if you, if you need it. So you, you, you desire to get lower, you wanna eventually do the splits, the front splits, um, something you could really, could be very helpful. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my left foot up off the floor if I can, I'm gonna pull it up into the hip or the butt, and then I'm gonna bring it down. If you pull it up too high, you'll cramp up. So use like 50% of your effort, something like that, and then bring it down. And then if you can, take it back up. And you might be reaching back for the hand. You know, I have very long arms, I can grab my foot. You know, I can push my foot into my hand. I can turn my upper body towards the right leg. Then you can release the foot and then when you release the foot. So being low is, you know, a great thing, but eventually you'll be able to come up. You'll be able to come up into an upright position. I'm not saying this is better, but most likely this is gonna be more difficult for you. And, and like I said, I could help you with, if you're having problems with your back knee, there's a lot of different ways you could do that. You can bring the hands down, take the back knee off the floor, and take the right arm up to the ceiling so the right arm is high and the left hand is low and then bring the right hand down and step the left foot forward. So left foot forward. 
Separate the feet a little bit wider than the shoulders. Grab the elbows, bend the knees. Push the knees apart. Stay above the knees for strength. And then as you get a little bit more tired, you know, it's great to sit down, it's great to squat, but you know, even if your heels are up, it's, it's great. It's a, it's a very good thing, it's not necessarily bad. And then what you'll do is you'll fold forward if you could and step the right foot back into a lunge. So the right foot is back down. Again, try to make it a little longer, a little wider, so I have a cross diagonal from my left foot to my right. And then, you know, I could take the left arm up to the ceiling, I could twist. So I'm turning my upper body toward my left hand. A couple deep breaths. Again, extending through the crown, turning through the belly, turning through the ribs, turning through the shoulders, and then bring the left hand down, and then bring the right knee down, and then you know you can move the weight around a little bit. So the top of the hip can be really, really tight from sitting. So I'm going to take the right foot up off the floor. I'm going to uh, actually I'm going to walk the hands just so that you can see. I'm going to take my hands over to the right side and look high over the right shoulder. So lifting the head, lifting the chest. And then as I lift the head, lift the chest, I could keep ribs in or I could stay in extension. And then maybe you wanna spend more time in this. So just again, just so you can see me, I'm gonna take my right foot up off the floor. So as I take my right foot up off the floor, I'm gonna pull it up and in. I'm gonna bring it down. I'm gonna take it up. I'm gonna bring it down. For me, this is like nothing on this side, but the other side was really difficult. So it might be the same for you, depending on the side, right? I could reach back with the left hand. I could grab hold of the foot. And you're, again, your tension in the belly and the ribs is something that you, I would apply. So if you don't have it, it's not bad. It's just, you're kind of missing out on exposing your body, stretching your body out better. Um, if you have it. And then you can release the foot. Take the back knee off the floor. Uh, line the shoulder, the left shoulder up with the knee. Take the left arm up to the ceiling so the left arm is high and the right hand is low. So turn the upper body towards the left hand. And then bring the left hand down and step the right foot forward. So I'm just, just so again, so you can see me a little bit differently. So I'm squatting all the way down if I, if I can. But having something underneath your heels is great. If you had some sort of meniscal tear or something with your ACL, you might want, not want to do like a full squats um, till you break down the scar tissue around the knee or actually get the meniscus uh, surgically repaired. Not repaired, but you know, cleaned up. You can fold forward into a four fold. And then what I'm gonna do is um, calm down on your hands and knees and come down onto your elbows, your forearms. And then as you're on your forearms, right, I'm, you know, I could be here, it could be right on my back, but you might not be able to hold this. So again, you could, you could not be in it. I'm gonna spin my heels to the left and take my right arm up to the ceiling. So as I was saying about one side being shorter, that's like functional scoliosis. So as I take my right arm up, my whole right side's being more exposed more. So you'll benefit more in side bending to your left. The right side is shorter, which is common for right-handed people. You can bring the right arm down, hold the plank for a couple breaths. You know, say you're, you're very strong, you could be on the tops of your feet, which is, you know, just, it's, it's much more difficult to do. You can tuck the toes, spin the heels to the right, and take the left arm up to the ceiling. So the left arm is high and the right arm is obviously supporting you. And, you know, you'll see that this side's stronger because if you think about it, everything that you pick up most likely is with your right hand if you're right-handed. So this side will be stronger. And then bring the left arm down, and then you can lower the knees, you can lower the thighs, and just be in a sphinx pose. So in sphinx, I have my elbows slightly more forward than my shoulders, and I'm, I'm trying to pull myself forward so that I'm in an upright position. So at some point you could just come down, right? Um, I'm gonna be more active like Shalabhasana variations uh, and, and something for your shoulders. I'm happy if you're up here, or you're coming down, you're just kind of watching, hanging out. So come all the way down and then when you come down, um, 
have the arms in a cactus position to start and then come up with the head and the shoulders and the chest. And if you can, you know, be careful with your back, right? But if you could take the arms forward, so you're lifting your chest, you know, similar to a warrior three, but you may, maybe it's better to take the arms back, right? So you got to kind of see what it's like and then bring yourself all the way back down. And then either come up into sphinx pose or have the hands relatively close to the shoulders and lift yourself up into a low cobra or a high cobra. And when you come up, I'm, you know, you'll, you'll see if you're watching me, I'm kind of moving things around. Because um, when you see photographs of yoga, yoga practitioners, especially like a pose like this, you know, most likely they're manipulating themselves a little bit so that things get a little bit more um, balanced. So it could be lifting the head, lifting the chest. You push through your hands, bring yourself forward, bring yourself down, and then just bring your forehead into your hands and you can just rest for a few breaths. This is a very, you know, more methodical way of countering, but it could be better than say like child's pose or down dog. You know, you're, you'll, you'll feel and see what's actually better for you as you practice. Take one more deep breath. And then bring your hands underneath your shoulders and tuck through the toes. Try to bring your ribs away from the floor. Then push to the hands, lift yourself up. You're in plank. And, and then pull back through a down dog. And then if you want it, you can swim forward and through into an up dog. You can exhale, you can pull back into a down dog. You can come forward, you can come through. You can pull back and then come down onto your hands and your knees. And you could sit in Virasana, you know, that's sitting on a block. Uh, I'm on the second level of the block, right? But again, if I was a high arch person, this might not be the best position, like a toe stand. That would be where you're, you know, tucking the toes and sitting back on the feet. That would be better. But this is a great position. So if lunging is really difficult for you, get in the practice of throughout the day, sitting more in positions like this, it'll get easier. Very good for, you know, improving your posture and your breathing. So take a couple deep breaths here. I'm going to take the hands into a lace position. And then I'm going to bring the hands forward. And then I'm going to take the arms up into an overhead position. So... It's very easy to just kind of sway, right? So think that I'm in front of you and I'm basically trying to bring your ribs away from your hands. So try to pull the ribs in, press through um, the webbing of your hands. For me, it's my pinky finger that kind of loses contact. So I'm trying to get more contact through that. And then you can bring the hands forward and you can bring them down. And um, you know, you could be back in all fours but just a different variation of plank is I'm gonna, it's kind of like crow, right? I'm gonna push through the hands. I'm gonna stay on the tops of my feet and I'm gonna lift my knees off the floor. So the more I push, the more I round, you know, then it assimilates more like eventually like a handstand. So come back down on the knees, make the stance a little bit longer and then come back up into plank. So when you apply yourself in something that's more difficult, right? Within reason, right? It's gonna help you get stronger and then some of these more repeated type of positions get way more easier and more efficient. So go back up into a down dog, push through the hands. Again, you could bend the knees and then walk the feet forward, middle of your mat, walk your hands back towards your feet. And then I'm just gonna be in a more of a ragdoll position for forward bending today. But you could be all the way up standing, working on standing positions or remaining on the floor. So just take the hands to the left side. Take the hands to the right and, and see which angle is actually better for you because it, it's gonna de depend on the day. Take the hands back in the middle and I'm gonna take my hands way forward but I'm gonna keep my upper body and my thighs. I'm gonna look forward. And then you can fold all the way forward into a forward bend. Uh, bring your hands on your hips, come up with a flat back, or roll yourself up to a standing position. 
roll yourself back up. And then when you come back up, take the arms overhead, hook the thumbs, and bend the knees so you're in a modified Ukatasana. So bring the weight into the heels, if it's in the toes, you know, if it's all the way forward. Not that that's bad. And then bring yourself back up to straight legs, and then come up on the toes if you could. Lift the heels, lift up to the upper body, right? and then you can lower the heels, and you can exhale, you can lower the arms. I'm going to turn to my top of my mat or end of my mat, do some standing positions. So just take your left leg up in space so the left leg comes up and use your hands as much as you need to to pull the leg in. And these are really basic positions, but actually requires more strength if you're not grabbing feet in some ways. So I'm going to take the arms up overhead and try to line myself up as best that I can. Then I'm going to twist towards the leg that's up. So I'm going to twist to my left. Your right leg is up, you just twist to your right. Take a couple deep breaths here. See where you're, you know, you might be leaning right to stay up. So you want to get your hips back if that's happening. Then you can turn forward, you can bring your left foot down. And you can, I'm going to turn my position just so you can see me better. You can take the right foot up off the floor. Um, I could take it up as much as I need to with my hand. And again, maybe you're using a wall, which is really smart. You can take the arms up overhead and then you can twist to your right. And then again, just kind of see like, you know, do your hips move too far forward? Do they move too far back? You don't have to look past the right hand, but something that you could do. And then you can turn forward and you can bring the right foot down and you can bring the arms down. So we're gonna go back to that open stance again. So take the feet out nice and wide, turn the right foot out to the right, Take the arms up to the height of the shoulders, bend the right knee, and just everybody will do it the way that they do it. Not that that's bad, but after a while it can be. So that's why you want to change it a little bit. So it's not bad to desire to go further into it, but you never really want to make Warrior Two into something that it's not. You know, if it there's ways that you could do it, but you do it differently to go further, and then it would be a different pose. So you could look over the right hand, and then I'm gonna bring myself back up. Now you could position a block on the inside of the foot for triangle. Side angle might be better for you. I'm gonna go out to the right, I'm gonna reach to the right. And like I said this in previous classes, if I'm up high, it's really, really great for the upper body. So you really, you know, if you wanna explore going lower, you, you could certainly do that. You know, you could push to the front of the foot. I'm grabbing the big toe. So the weight, but maybe I need to be up. You know, forget about going further. Doesn't have to be today. You can bring yourself back up. You can turn the right foot in. You can turn your left foot to the left. Take the arms out wide and then bend the left knee. And, and again, you're lifting through the crown. You know, when I remember, I'm thinking about expanding into all the space that's around me. So even when I'm in an elevator, which is a great practice, it's very good for posture. So as I'm here, I'm, I'm pushing up and out with the thighs, right? And then I'm, I'm gonna get my left leg straight, and then with my left leg straight, I may move the right foot in a little bit closer, or hop it in, and extend out through the left. You could grab the shin and then take the right arm up. So again, if I'm up high, it's just temporary, right? Or it could be the whole time. As it gets easier, you can certainly get lower. You could bend the knee to grab the big toe, and then you could straighten through the left leg. But that might be, that might never be happening for you. That doesn't mean that it's better, it's just there's, there's more range to it. So you're broadening your shoulders, you're broadening your back. Take a couple deep breaths here. Try to get even through the feet. Lift through the top of the head. And then bring yourself back up. And then when you come back up, you can turn the left foot in and you can step the feet back into a neutral position. Uh, so take the arms up overhead one more time, hook the thumbs, change the hooking of the thumbs, you'll see which hand you favor. Come up on the toes. Couple deep breaths. And then you can lower the heels and you can exhale, you can lower the arms. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my feet out a little bit wider than my shoulders. So if you measure toe heel, toe heel with feet together, it's about 
five movements of the feet. Um, feet can be slightly out or all the way out, really. You could um, take the arms out wide. I'm gonna make my hands in a fist. And this is really great to do up against the wall, like, you know, like a rock climber. So to get like that far up into the wall, is really good for the hips. So I'm pushing the legs apart. And like I said, if I'm a person that's not really strong, stay above your knees, right? Keep that tension. And when you're really strong, you can go much further into positions. So I always say, you know, it's better to get stronger in positions as opposed to just more flexible. Flexibility, anybody can get more flexible um, as you get stronger. Uh, maybe you're already up and pushing my legs apart. You know, if I told you how, you know, I'm not going to say how long I hold these poses, but really long, very long. And you could do it as well. You just have to obviously practice it. Bring yourself back up, bring your arms down, and then just step your feet back together. And you may need a wall for this, but I'm going to stretch out the front of your leg. So I'm going to bend my right knee and grab hold of my shin or my foot. But if I had a chair, I could just put my foot on a chair but I could take it up. Um, I could hold both. Not that this is better. It's really not. Um, just might be easy for you to do. You can bring the right foot down and then take the left foot up off the floor. You can hold on it. It could be a chair or you having a wall. And you know, when we sat on the block, it's really the same position. So it's just, this is more, um, geared for for balance. So take a few deep breaths. It's the beginning of doing like fuller expressions of uh, Kapotasana that's or Natrajasana. And then you can bring the left foot down. So we're gonna come down on the floor. Um, you could sit on something higher if you need to. So have your legs in um, an open stance have your feet turned out and and squeeze your legs into your arms like squeeze in nothing crazy and then after a few seconds just relax you know don't push so much but squeeze in lift up really a weak muscle for anyone most people I mean unless you're doing like inline skating or you know different stuff like where you're strengthening the adductor so it's, it's a very weak muscle and then just relax that. And then bring the soles of your feet together. And with the soles of your feet together, I'm gonna to bring my right hand into my right thigh. I'm gonna push into the thigh and create some space between either knee. So I'm, really the, the practice is you're lifting the knee up into the hand. And as you lift the knee up into the hand, you're, you're gonna get stronger. And then bring the right hand down, and then bring the left hand on the left thigh and lift up into it, and you lift up into it, you know, create some space between um, the knee and the crest of the pelvis. And then bring the left hand down and just push the knees apart. Not necessarily down, right? Think your knees are touching the walls that are beside you. Continue to find the ceiling above you. And then you can bring the legs back up. And then when you take the legs back up, you're gonna have the knees bent and take the right foot outside the left hip and step the left foot over the right knee. And then take the right arm around if you could. Some people like to hook the elbow. Of course you can do that. Um, eventually you can get the armpit. I'm getting my right armpit into my left, or my right armpit into my left knee. And I'm, I'm trying to lift up, you know, Resting, you can you know, save that for another day. And you can take the strap off the head and off the foot. And you know, you could be in you know, bent knees is really great. Um, you know, uh, blocks underneath the knees. But just to give you some other things to, to use, I'm gonna put a bolster underneath my knees, but I'm also gonna put blocks for my feet. So that's if you have this stuff. So what this does is it, it, it gives you some traction in your lower back. Some people like not the feet suspended, so the heels could be on the block. But for me, again, I, I could fit my whole entire arm underneath my lower back. 
So not that I don't extend for my lumbar, but it's good to, to pull it apart. And you can have your arms on you or beside you. And again, if you're very uncomfortable having your eyes closed, keep your eyes open. Support your head if you need to. But what's really, really great is having something rolled up in the base of your neck. Or say you got some tennis balls or, you know, a really small, like, towel. You can roll it up and put it underneath your neck. And that's, everybody needs that for the most part. I'm gonna let you rest, but I'm just gonna check out the time just so that I don't run over. So just get more weight in your skeletal system. And then as you get more weighted, you, you really start to broaden and, you know, it's much easier to breathe and I say this all the time in my classes, like your, your posture will continuously improve by being on your back. And because again, we're probably sitting way more than we need to, especially at this time, is get in the practice of standing but notice how you stand, you know, when you're standing. And again, I put something on Facebook. It's really basic meditation standing practice, which you can use. It's so, so good for your posture. So I'm happy if you stay on your back and you're just like, ah, I just want to bliss out. I want to stay here. But um, let's say you're ready to come up. You can wiggle your fingers. You can wiggle your toes. You can pull your knees into your chest. And take a couple deep breaths. You, know, you could roll yourself up, you could roll to one side. And then if you do roll to one side, then you could use your hands, you could bring yourself back up. And when you come back up, you know, I think it's so good to sit, you know, sit for a couple minutes, you know, in class, I'm teaching class, you know, I don't always do that because I don't always have the time, but really a great practice in itself is just sitting. So if you wanna um, have your hands up, palms up, you could do that, yeah, you can come. Um, and then you could, you know, just kind of tune in and then when you tune in, you could, you could sit down here, you could sit on a block. Yeah. And then you could, um, you know, I'm trying to expand in all these different directions. And then as I, I, I expand in all these different directions, right, I'm, again, it's a, it's a pose of, of, if it's meditation, it's, it's a bit more relaxed, but if you're really working on your structure, there's an element of strength. You don't have to bring your hands together, but you could. I had a great time today. I love the support. I love that you're continuing to practice with me. And there's a lot of, obviously, everybody's teaching online now, so it's great to support other people as well. And I, if, if you're looking for a specific class and I'm not teaching it, I could definitely direct you and friends that I, I know are very, very good teachers as well, and I'd love to support them as well. So have a great day, and hopefully I'll... Um, be in touch with you soon. Namaste. Daddy? Mm -hmm. Let's go. Okay, I need some more.